What's up guys? So this is going to be a follow up to my home theater tour video. I wanted to address some questions that were left in the comment section and also a couple of things that I didn't touch on in that video. Of course, you can use everything that I'm saying in your future home theater build or for your future home theater upgrades because most of this build, pretty much almost all of this, the entire build, I did everything myself. So the only thing that I didn't do myself was the carpet because since I added the ramp in and I put the steps in, I didn't know how to carpet that and I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't want to buy a bunch of carpet and screw it up and have to start all over again. Luckily, when I went to Home Depot, that's where I bought the carpet. I was going to do that, but right before checkout, he asked me if I wanted to get installation. I said, no, I'm going to do it myself because I didn't want to spend the 600, six or 700 bucks. I think he told me installation would have cost. Come to find out installation was free if you spent over 700 bucks. Of course, why wouldn't I get free installation? And the total cost for the carpet was 1800 bucks. I think it was like 1865 with tax. So it was like $1,900. And that's the only thing that I didn't do myself in this room. Now, first question here. Well, first thing I probably should have touched on a little bit more in the tour video, but I wanted to keep everything pretty, pretty compact and kind of short. I didn't want to go into like an hour long video was how did I build the panels? Now, the panels are what you're seeing on the walls. They're they're about four by eight. I used Owens Corning 703, one inch, one inch thick panels. I know a lot of people like to use two inch thick just to really absorb more of the sound. So it keeps some of the outside sounds in and absorb some reflections from your speakers as well. And that's all great. But since I was only dealing with 14 feet in width, I didn't want to go in digging into the room another another four inches. I didn't want to eat too much into the room. Now, of course, I'm no professional sound engineer. I'm no acoustician or anything like that. But using the one inch uh, Owens Corning 703, I definitely helped mitigate some of the sound from the outside coming inside and also the sound from inside going outside. I know this because I can only hear like rumble coming from the outside. So let's say a big truck drives by like the UPS truck. I can hear that. I can feel the rumble of their tires driving down the street. As far as sound exiting the room, going out to the neighborhood, the only thing that, that you can really hear is the bass. And I know this because the neighbors have let me know this. <laughs> uh, but as far as hearing like dialogue and stuff like that, like explosions and all that, or machine guns fire and all that stuff, um, you can't really hear that. It's a little muffled, but it's really unintelligible. Like you don't know what I'm watching. The way that I built the panels was I used some pretty inexpensive furring strips. So they're like a dollar and change from Home Depot or Lowe's, which I did mention in the video. And all I did was I just built rectangular boxes, which I believe are four by eight. I think they're a little, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Maybe like eight by eight by six or something. Um, but they were a little bit bigger than four by eight. So I did use the Owens Corning 703 one inch, which does cost $113 for a package of 12. And I did build 52 panels in total. So, I mean, that's a lot of panels. It took me a couple of days to build everything, but once you get everything going, you know, it goes, it goes pretty quick once you get the hang of it. Always measure twice, cut once, you know, you know the whole mantra. Trust me, I know I messed up quite a few times, but, but once you get it going, like I said, it's pretty quick. I did add a little bit of flair to the panels. I did pick up a router at Harbor Freight. It was like $40 just so I can add a little chamfer on the edge of each panel. So, you know, hard to tell in the video, but if you're in the room and you look closely at the panels, there is that nice little chamfered beveled edge on each panel, which I think gives it a nice little, little more professional look. And the reason why I decided to go with fabric walls and build panels and all that, because I've never been to a commercial cinema that had painted walls with acoustic insulation hanging off the walls. Most of the theaters, actually all the theaters that I've ever been to either had fabric walls like this or they had carpeted walls. So I wanted to have that exact feeling of walking into a commercial cinema, just like a Dolby cinema, which is what I pretty much modeled this entire theater off of. But I did one by twos and I just, you know, measured out uh, a rectangle and I joined them together with some brad nails, just shot them in the corners. And then from then I just wrapped them in the fabric, which I got from Acoustamac. It's their FR something or another, their FR executive fabric, which looks almost exactly like speaker cloth. It comes in a variety of different colors. It's not too much money either. It's only $14.99, 15 bucks for a yard. 
And I think I spent total, let's say total lumber to build the walls, to build the frames. I spent about maybe three, 400 bucks in lumber. And for the fabric, I'd spent probably about another four or 500 bucks. And then the insulation, I bought about four boxes of that. Actually, no, I bought more than four boxes. Probably a total of about $1,500, give or take a couple hundred bucks. Um, I did get quoted, like I, I was going to go with the fabric made stuff, which is those plastic tracks. Uh, it makes insulation way easier because all you do is just staple the tracks on the wall and then you tuck your fabric right over your insulation. Um, but that is, you know, if I was going to do that, I believe it was like $18 per stick for a five foot length. And for the designs that I wanted in the room, I mean, I got quoted with insulation with all the, with all the uh, actual strips itself. I got quoted about $10,000. That's probably the main reason why I went the DIY route because I wasn't going to spend $10,000. I just spent two grand, a little less than two grand, and I did everything myself. So that's a win for me, and also I think should be a win for you if you if you decide to go with fabric walls. I mean, it's a it's an easy project. It's a little time consuming, but after building all these panels, I mean, you are going to be a professional when all is said and done. It's a, it definitely is a good feeling once everything is is finished. Now the one very good thing about putting panels on the walls is that I did not have to run any cables in the walls to go up to any of the surround speakers or any of the height speakers. The only time I had to run cables through the wall is from outside of this room into the downstairs into the equipment rack and everything else, all the cables to all the speakers, they're actually just laying right behind each panel. So if I needed to make any cables longer, I made sure that I left a little bit of slack, so I rolled it up. Uh, so if I had to extend the cable outwards for any reason, I made sure that I did have some extra slack to do that. That's another reason why I wanted to do the panels as well, just to make insulation, uh, installation a lot easier. Now, another question that came up uh, quite a few times was, what is the distance from my main seat to the screen? Well, from the screen, from my MLP, main listening position, which is that seat right here, just about exactly nine feet, maybe a little bit further, maybe like 9.2 feet from the MLP to the screen. Uh, and that's and that's everywhere across the front row. So it's nine, a little about 9.2 feet from the first row. Distance between, let me just go distance between all the speakers as well. So from the front row to the front left, center, right speakers, we're looking at about 12.5 feet. From the main listening position, which is the main seat, to the wide speakers, we're looking at nine and a half feet, seven feet from the first set of surrounds, and then six feet from the MLP up to the middle, up to the middle height speakers. And then also 9.5 feet from the MLP, from the front row up to the top front speakers. Now from the second row, it is from the from the second row middle seat. We are looking at, again, seven feet to the side surround speakers, six feet from the second row MLP to the back corner left rear speaker, and then 5.5 feet from the second row MLP to the center surround speaker. And then we have another six feet from the top rear speakers over to the second row MLP, and then seven feet from the second row MLP up to the top middle height speakers. And then as far as spacing between all of the speakers, we are looking at approximately five and a half to six feet between all the speakers. I think the closest speakers uh, that are the closest together are going to be the back speakers, which are 4.5 feet between each other. So, I mean, everything is uh, spaced out pretty nicely. They've all got, you know, somewhat similar equidistant spacing amongst everything around the entire room. Obviously, there's going to be the, the, the most compromised seats are going to be the end seats, and then the best seats are going to be the middle seats. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's what happens. That's, those are the compromises with having a 14-foot room. Ideally, if I could build, if I could have built my own room, I, I probably would have went with at least a 20 foot wide room. I'm happy with the length of the room, which is 25 and uh, I think it's like 25 and a half feet from front to back. And then again, you know, 14 from side to side. Again, ideally, if I could have just redid this myself, like built the room myself, I would have went with a 20 foot, with a 20 foot width. That would have that would have left a lot of room to just like walk down the side of the seats because, as of right now. I mean, if you're coming in through the front door or if you're 
going down from uh, the right side of the room down to the front row. The uh, the surround speakers are kind of right there. Like if you don't know, if you didn't know that the speakers were there, pretty good chance that your shoulder is going to bump right into the speakers, which has happened quite a few times with some of the uh, some of the guests that I've had come through so far. So that's like the only real negative that I really that I really hate about this room is that it's just a little bit too a little bit too narrow for my tastes. Still way bigger than what I had at the apartment, so I'm happy about that. And you know, it still sounds really good. But of course, we've all got to make some compromises, right? Another question that came up quite a few times was about the LED lighting on the wall. So I've already explained that you want to pick up some cob lights or F cob lights to get that smooth linear lighting all across the room because you don't want to see each individual LED. I also didn't mention that with these LED lights, you will need a power supply. I mean, you can get these lights in kits, but the one that I bought, which is 16.5 feet for $33, what you would do, you get the power supply, you take the end of the LEDs, you plug in the positive negative into that, and then you plug it into your wall and then you're good to go. Between the power supply and the LED is a Wi-Fi Bluetooth controller. So that will allow the app for the lights to speak to the lights, to control the lights, either through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So going that route, I saved a few hundred dollars rather than going with like the Philips Hue. Obviously, going with Philips Hue probably would have been, well, I know it would have been a lot easier to set up and the app probably works better as well. But, you know, just to save some money, I went with the DIY route. And, you know, I think it's a bit more flexible as well going with that route instead of going with the mainstream Go V and Philips Hue. But hey, man, if you got the money, if you got the spare change, go with the Philips Hue stuff. It just works. And another question that I got to address is that if I'm showing like, a, if I'm doing a movie review, if I'm reviewing speakers and I've got some B-roll of me watching a movie, I keep the LED lights on because it makes the, it makes the visuals look cool. It lights up the room and it's nice to add a little bit of color to the video. I do not watch movies with the LED strip on because that's just gonna really hinder the image quality. It's gonna degrade the image quality. So guys, stop asking me to, to do something about the lights or why do I have the LED lights on? I do not watch movies with the LED lights on. That's, that would be ridiculous. Another question that's popped up a couple times is why do I have two sets of surround speakers? You have too many speakers in your room. Well, you know, just like I said, if you want the smoothest sound transitions between each row, between your entire wall, get more side surrounds. You know, if your processor can support it, why wouldn't you do that? Obviously, if you have like one row, don't go putting two side surrounds in. That might be a bit overkill. Uh, really no need for that. But if your surrounds, you know, if your processor does it, then if you want to do it, then go ahead and do it. But I mean, I have two rows, so it just made sense. And I, and I have sufficient spacing between each speaker. And maybe the coolest part of this home theater build is going to be the door. Now, I did shop for acoustic doors. And I tell you what, acoustic doors, soundproof doors, they're like $6,000. They're ridiculously expensive. And my entire, all my materials in this room <laughs> didn't even add up to $6,000. So I was not going to spend 6,000 bucks, especially since this is not a perfectly sound treated room. So spending six grand for an acoustic door, not exactly a smart move. So my door is just a solid core door, which you can buy at Home Depot. I think it cost me like 190 bucks. Delivery was like 40 bucks. But all it is is a solid core door. And um, I didn't put a door handle on it, or sorry, I didn't put a doorknob on it. I went and got, I went and got a shower grab bar for the front, from, for the inside of the theater and also the outside of the theater. So that's what you're seeing on the wall back there. All it is is a black shower grab bar. I believe it's 36 inches in length. Now I went that route instead of doing just the regular doorknob because every time I've gone to a commercial theater, they usually just have like the grab bar or you could just like push the door open. And then, you know, I added the door closer as well. So if you were to come into the room, you walk away, the door is just going to close by itself. Maybe the coolest thing was putting the door panel on the door. So the fabric panels on the door. Now, the one tricky thing that uh, took me a little bit to figure out, I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. So what I did was I cut the LED to size. I put it on the door inside the LED track. 
and I made sure that I had enough slack where I could wrap the wire from the LED around the hinge up into the LED onto the actual sidewall itself. So when you open the door, there's enough slack. It's enough to pull the door open and not pull the LED off of the door. So, I mean, that was probably my greatest part of the build was attaching that LED to the door. But to get the, uh, to get the wire on the door, all I did was, again, I just wrapped it around the hinge and then I got some black duct tape and I just duct taped it around the hinge. I should also mention as well that you have to get, if you're going to put panels on the door, you have to get a long throw hinge. Like this one, I've put some links to it on the, in the video's description, but the hinge is, uh, it's like that long. It's a couple inches long. So that way when you open the door, it, it swings the door out a bit further. So that way the panels on the door don't hit the other panel on the opposite side of the wall. Cause if you get a standard hinge, the door is not going to open and the, the panels are going to, are going to catch and smack the other side of the wall. I think they're pretty inexpensive as well there. I think they were like 45 bucks for two hinges. Definitely well worth it. And I think gives the room a much, a much cleaner look because you don't have fabric walls everywhere and then just a plain wooden door. So I like having that totally enclosed look. Everything is all uniform everywhere. And if you didn't know where you were in the room, you might have a hard time finding where the door is. You know, total cost just for the materials. I'm not, I'm not talking about the speakers or anything like that. The total cost came to about 50, 5,800 bucks. That's with the carpet. That's with the lumber. That's with the fabric, with the screws. You know, something that you might not think about is screws actually came to a lot of money as well. I didn't, I've never used that many screws in my life. Um, the screws, the brad nails, uh, just everything, everything combined, uh, 5,800 bucks. Now the biggest, the biggest portion of that would be, would be the lumber that, that, that it took to build the riser. I think the riser alone was something like $2,000. I mean, the price of wood is, the price of good wood is like ridiculous nowadays. And then the second biggest cost is going to be the carpet. Again, that was about 1900 bucks total. So, I mean, unavoidable. I mean, I, I, I was kind of expecting the riser to cost a lot less than that, maybe like a thousand dollars, but I didn't think it was going to cost 2,400 bucks, but, but it did. It is what it is. You know, the gear and all that stuff, that's a different story. Gear is different for everyone. You, it can range from, you know, you can get used stuff from like 10 bucks all the way up to brand new stuff into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's not what this video was about. It's just about, you know, what you can do to build your room, you know, like this, if you like the look of this room, that's, this is about how much um, it would cost for this size room and for the materials and what you would need to get the stuff going together, which uh, was, you know, it was a fun project. It, it took me about, took me about two solid months. Uh, I lost about 10 pounds doing it. I was just like not eating. I was just working night and day. I was not even sleeping sometimes. I was staying up for two, three days at a time trying to get everything put together. And uh, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, but, but that's it. I mean, if there's anything that you can take away from this video to apply it to your home theater upgrade, to your future home theater build, uh, definitely do so and let me know how that comes along. But, this, but again, this was a fun project. Uh, glad that I could share this with you guys and some of the insight that it took me to accomplish everything. But again, thanks guys for watching. Um, links down below in this video's description if you want to find any of the tools or any of the materials that I use for the video. I'm going to leave them down below in this video's description. Always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.